Our lesson 10.3 is going to bring back the older topic of geometric sequences, and then we're going to extend that to geometric series today as well. And we're going to have some application questions coming up now. I don't want to get anyone excited, but I think this might be our last lesson. Well, it's definitely the last lesson in the unit, and then we have a little mini unit on limits coming up, and then we're done. So, <laughs> geometric sequence is going to have a common ratio between each of the terms. So, if you remember from our work in a previous le uh, lesson, my pen will work. The geometric sequence formula is for the explicit a sub 1 times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So that's for sequencing the numbers, and then we're going to learn today um, what it looks like to have a, a series where you add them all together. So this example, oh, there's that formula again. Um, there's a little note here from your book that says, remember that a sequence is not arithmetic. It's not necessarily geometric. There are a lot of sequences and patterns out there in the world that are neither arithmetic or geometric nor geometric, so don't just assume if it's not one, then it's the other. So, the seventh term of a geometric sequence, here we go, so you are welcome to kind of expand out um, with the pattern, but you need to figure out the pattern before you can do that. So, the multiplier to go from here to here is negative three, it's the common ratio. If you can't figure that out by looking, then what you do is you take the second term, and you divide it by the first term, and that's a way to find the common ratio. So, like I said, you can continue on with your pattern here, or you could just go ahead and write yourself a quick formula and then plug in 7 for the 7th term. So, the 7th term would be our first term, and then we just found our common ratio of negative 3. And then to the n minus 1 power, well, that would be 7 minus 1, or you could just write the 6th power, which I think I already did this one, and 5,832. So, it's a lot easier to use an explicit formula than continue out the pattern, Unless for some reason you're only finding like the next term. So remember how we had arithmetic means? Well, we have geometric means as well. So this time we have to remember when we set up the geometric mean, we still have the issue of like hopping from here to here to here. They don't give you what term numbers they are. You just have to kind of count. We have one, two, three things were multiplied together um, to get from this number to this number. So um, they solved it kind of weird. We do this a little different. This is how your book does it. There's nothing wrong with what your book did, but what we do is we say 480 was multiplied by some common ratio one, two, three times, and it gave us an answer of negative 7.5. And then we solve that. So we divide by the 480. Uh, I don't have this one done, so I'm going to kind of cheat. Um, these are gone. And then you would have cube rooted this answer. And it's something, um, something positive, so don't worry about that. But we're cube rooting it, and it would come out to apparently negative. Oh, why is that negative? That's positive. Hello. So the answer is going to come out to a negative one fourth for the common ratio. Um, remember, you can cube root negative, so don't worry about that. But that's how you would hop from one term to another. So then, if they wanted you to fill in the rest of the geometric means in the middle, you'd multiply by negative one fourth as you move along, and then you'd fill in the rest of the pattern. So. Not too bad. All right, write a sequence that has two geometric means. This one's not done for us. So think of it this way. We're going to start at 6. We're going to go 1, 2, 3 hops to get to 162. So 6 times the common ratio, but 3 times, equals 162. Now, see how this is very different from arithmetic. This is a multiplication question because um, we're multiplying when we do uh, geometric ratios. When we did arithmetic, means it was adding the common difference so many times. So keep that in mind. Very different question. We're going to solve this, which I think I already did. Get my trusty key out. All right, so, yep, yep. Um, R to the third power is 27, looks like. So when I cube root both sides, or you can raise it to the one-third power. That's an easy way to do it on your calculator. Um, because getting the cube root feature means you have to go to another menu. So sometimes kids just like to type it this way. But you don't really have to type this one, guys. The cube root of 27 is 3. We knew that. So the common ratio is 3. And it does say write a sequence. So the sequence would be first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. Now, to fill in the rest of these means, I'm not going to bother using the formula. I'm just going to multiply by my common ratio. So if I multiply this by 3, I get 18. If I multiply that by 3, I hope you multiply that by 3, I get 54. I just had a breakfast with my students. It was wonderful. All right, here we go. Practice. Determine the common ratio. 
for the and then find the next three terms. This is an interesting question because it's algebraic, so you really have to know what's going on. So here's your first term, here's your second term, and maybe you already see the common ratio, but if you don't, remember you can always just take the second term and divide it by the first term. Now you do have a little algebra factoring here. You can factor out a 2, and then you have some cancellation because the x plus 1s will cancel. So apparently the common ratio is 2, and then when I look at my problem, I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense because they're multiplying by 2 each polynomial. So that makes lots of sense. There's your common ratio. And then it says find the next three terms. So multiplying this guy by 2 would be 8x plus 8, and then 16x plus 16. You're sensing a pattern here. And then 32x plus 32. Lovely. All right. Moving along. Find the first term, and then they give me some random clues. All right, so there's a couple of ways we can do this question. If you're going to use the formula, that is a fine way to do the question. So you're going to use your explicit general formula, but you're going to fill in what you know. So this time, for the nth term, I'm going to say it's the sixth term, which is 0.1, is the first term times our common ratio. And then remember, it's to the n minus 1 power. Well, if we're using this formula to find the 6th term, technically, that would be to the 6 minus 1 power or to the 5th power. So we're going to divide both sides here by 0.2 to the 5th power. So these are gone. And type in that on my calculator because I'm kind of overthinking today. Um, what do we get? This is number 2, huh? Oh, lovely. Hmm. Where is it? There it is. Uh, looks like our common ratio, or our first term, excuse me, is 312.5, I think that says. I can't read my writing. That makes sense, because we're dividing by a super tiny number. All right. That's all they want is the first term. We could go back and write it in an explicit formula now, but I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, this time, find the R. And then we're going to give you the first term, and then a random tenth term. Oh, I didn't go over how we can do the other question another way. Basically, you just take the concept of like how many times did you multiply and then go backwards to find a sub 1. We've done that before. I sense from your friends in class that they don't really like that method. They would rather just use the formula. So I'll go ahead and use the formula here. So I have, instead of the nth term, let's use the tenth term. Is a sub 1 times this common ratio that I don't know, and then to the n minus 1 power. But remember, we're setting this formula up for the tenth term. So it's to the 10 minus 1 or the 9th power. So to solve this equation, we divide by 15. We'll use a little calculator help here, or actually I think the key has it. Yeah, 512. All right, so 512 equals r to the 9th power. And then you can 9th root this using the x root feature on your calculator, or you could just raise it to the 1 9th power, which works for me. Now on your newer calculators, it'll just do 1 9th in the exponent position. If you're using an older calculator, make sure you use parentheses around the 1 9th power. Anyways, this comes out to a 2. And that's all they want. Find R. All right. Um, huh, that's a typo. We're going to write a geometric sequence that has three geometric means between 7 and 7, uh, 567. So here's 7, and then there's 1, 2, 3 blanks. But remember, we have to get to the last number. So three blanks does not mean three things. It means one, two, three, four steps, or four hops or jumps, or whatever you want to call them. So seven times the common ratio four times gets you to 567. All right, let's solve. So r to the fourth power equals 81, looks like. Now, this one's kind of unusual, because we're going to fourth root this, or take it to the one-fourth power. And fourth root's an even root, which means it's technically plus or minus, right? So this is actually plus and minus three. Um, and it does say write a geometric sequence. Now, I had to kind of play around with this one for a minute and make sure it did work. If I use negative, the positive three wasn't the issue. I was wondering about negative three. So if I multiply it every time by a negative three, I had to make sure that I did still get a 567. It turns out, yeah, they both work. So it's up to you whether you want to use a common ratio of 3 or negative 3. So I'll just use positive 3. So I'm a positive lady, you know? All right, so 7 times our common ratio to the n minus 1 power. 
Again, negative 3 works too. Fun, huh? Alright. So now, what if we have a series where we want to sum them up? So we have two formulas here. Um, they both work, and they're lovely. And they're derived from one another, if that makes you feel any better. But I think this is the formula that we're going to be utilizing the most. It's my favorite of the two, and it kind of depends on what you have, right? So this formula is assuming that you know the first term and the last term of a series, and we usually don't. I mean, I'm not saying we never do, but we usually don't. This formula, all you need is the first term, you need the common ratio, and you need to know what number terms you're going out to, and then you'll be able to sum them up. But I, I would like to tell you that we can still use the sum of the sequence business on our calculator. So keep that in mind. You have to kind of make a decision. Now those are for what we call finite geometric sequences where they are, um, they're going to end. They have an nth term. But there are infinite geometric sequences that never end. So if they converge or diverge, depends on how we progress. So if you have an infinite geometric series that never technically ends, if it converges to a value, then you can use this formula to figure out what the sum would be of the terms. Because what's happening is, as the terms converge out to, generally they converge to zero, or something close to zero, at some point all these terms you're adding together, like they don't affect the, the sum. So it's kind of cool. It's, what, it's called a limit in calculus, and we'll talk about that another time. Alright, geometric series. So there's that formula we're going to be using mostly. Um, be very careful how you type this one, though. You're going to probably have extra parentheses right here and right here. Um, so please don't do that thing where you just watch someone else type it or just assume you're going to type it right. Please practice. Oh, but there's a note here about when you can use this infinite formula. If your ratio is less than one, you're allowed to use this formula. But if your ratio is greater than one, then it's divergent, meaning you're not going to be able to find a sum. So. Sorry, that's good news. It means you could just say not possible. <laughs> this question, find the sum of the first 12 terms. So we're going for 12 terms. That's why they have S sub N. Remember the notation for series is S. Our first term is six. And I can figure out the common ratio by doing 7.5 divided by six, which is totally, I should be able to do that, but I can't. <laughs> uh, Goodness, what is it? 1.25. What? Is that right? Yeah. Apparently that's right. 1.25. So there's the common ratio. We have our first term. Here goes the formula. Ready? Starts off with 12, right? So S sub 12 equals. Oh, sorry. Formula one. First term. So it starts off with a 6, and then you need to open a parenthesis. Um, this part, if you go back to the formula, it has this a sub 1 with like a big set of parentheses here. This can technically just go up in the numerator as long as you have the numerator in parentheses. So I said that kind of weird earlier, I apologize. So it's 1 minus the r, which is 1.25. You don't need parentheses here, but you might want to get in the habit of putting parentheses in case it's a fraction, um, to the 12th power. And then you need to close the numerator. I'll use blue here. And then we're going to divide by, now here you do need parentheses, it's 1 minus r. And again, um, you're welcome to use extra parentheses, but since there's no power on this one, I'm not going to bother using anything around the 1.25. Please type that in your calculator and make sure you know how to get the answer of, and it's gross, 325.24592. I'm sure at some point you can turn that into a fraction, but like, it won't math enter, enter for me because of too many decimals, so I'm done with that question. Alright, so here, this question has a infinite series, right? So there's no ending. So first we have to determine if we can either find the sum. If we can figure out our common ratio, which they already did for us, 8 divided by 40 is 0.2. Because it's smaller than 1, that means we can, it converges to a value so we can find the sum. I love this formula. It's so easy to use. You take the first term, 40, and then you do 1 minus the r, 1 minus 0.2. Now, on your calculator, use parentheses here if you're doing that in one step, but this comes out to 50. 
So that's my absolute favorite question. I love the Infinite Series ones. I love them even more if they diverge and you can't answer them because they're really easy then, but um, I love the Infinite Series formula the best. It's easy. All right, find the sum of the first seven terms. Now this time they don't want to go forever. We're just going to seven terms. So I am not, oops, that's a seven. I am not given a formula. You could figure out a formula if you'd like. Uh, clearly the first term is negative one. And the common ratio is negative four over negative one, which is four. So using our formula, we take the first term times one minus, again, get in the habit of using parentheses around the R, even if you don't think you need them, which you don't here, but it's a good habit, to the seventh power, close the numerator, and then we're going to divide by one minus R is 4. All right, typing that on my calculator, I get negative 5, 4, 6, 1. Now, the other option, and we haven't done this in a little while, but remember that sum of the sequence business? You can do that, but you'd have to write the formula. But guys, if you have a sub 1 and r, you have your formula. So the explicit formula you'd be using is, let's see, negative 1, times r to the, and depending on what mode you're in, x minus 1 or n minus 1, comma. Now you do have to use parentheses, I think, in this mode. It doesn't accept like exponential form, so you have to type it like that. Anyways, comma x, comma 1, comma 7. And when that goes in your calculator, and remember the newer ones have the paste feature, so you don't even have to remember the order, it's going to give you the same answer. So if you're already creating the formula for some reason, or you're given the formula, I think summing the sequence on your calculator is really nice. However, these summation formulas will work as well. What I do not want you to do, however, my pre-calc friends, is do them both ways on a test, because when you do that, you waste a ridiculous amount of time. So if you have extra time and you want to double check your answer, fine. But please don't do that and then tell me you ran out of time, because that's on you, right? Find the sum of the geometric series. Oh, boy. Ooh. <laughs> so we have some mystery term here. Mystery. I have my common ratio and I have my first term. Okay, so let's think about these clues for a minute. Let's see if we can come up with a formula. So the first term is eight times the common ratio, which is, oops, one fourth. You can write 0.25 if you want, to the n minus one power, which I do not know. I don't know what n is at least, but I know the answer comes out to 0.03, one, two, five glasses. I need them. All right, so if I divide this by eight, I don't know if I wrote that number down. Maybe. Yeah, okay. So this actually comes out to it. This is a weird fraction. So when you divide it by eight, this comes out to one over 256, I think. Equals one fourth to the n minus one power. Now, there's a lot of ways we could solve this. You could use logarithms. Um, I might suggest you rewrite this in terms of the same base. These have a common base of four. This is four to the negative fourth power, because the negative would flip to a fraction, right? Um, and this is four to the negative first power, but um, you have to remember that this four to the negative first power right here already has an n minus one power. So when we use this method, you have to combine your exponents here and set it equal to that exponent. So the equation I'm gonna set up is negative four equals negative 1 times this would be negative n plus 1. And then doing a little magic math here, I, am, I end up with n equals 5. Okay. So, n is 5. This is the fifth term, right? And they want the sum of the first five terms. So, summing our five terms. Um, I don't care what formula you use, guys. It's, I want to just use the one we have been using. That works for me. So, the first term was 8 and then it's one minus one fourth, you use parentheses this time, um, to the fifth power over one minus, and you really don't need parentheses here because there's no power, but you need them around the denominator. So typing that in my calculator, I get something, <laughs> negative five, four, six, one. Oop, bad answer, there we go, that was messy. 
That was a really challenging question. Okay, there's nothing that elaborate on your test, but that was a really cool question. I liked it. Had a lot of stuff going on. All right, so here. They give me the sigma notation, which I know is strange and unusual to us, but sigma notation means they're just flat out giving you the formula. So you are welcome to continue to use the, the previous formula with the you know, first number and the common ratio, because you see both of those things, right? This, this is going to be your first number. And then your common ratio is this dude. Um, but I just do some of the sequence when they give me the formula, because the formulas are usually pretty easy. You do have to be a little careful about how you're typing this on your calculator, though. Um, it's 5, parentheses, 1.06 caret to the whatever you're using, x minus 1 power, if you're in that mode. And then comma, x, comma, 1, comma, 11. Remember, if you're using a newer calculator, you don't have to remember that order at all. You just it pastes it. So either way, the summation of the first 11 terms comes out to 74.8582. So if you didn't like using some of the sequence, could have gone through and done this. Sum of the 11 terms is 5, <laughs> parenthesis, 1 minus 1.06 to the 11th power, divided by 1 minus 1.06 in a set of parentheses. Still would have given you the same answer, so up to you. I'm going to pause for a moment. I had to get my pledge on again. All right, here we go. Next question, number eight. So, uh, find the sum of the first 16 terms, so it's finite. Give me the first term. That's nice. Oh, it's recursive. All right. So the recursive formula here, remember, this means the previous term. So we're supposed to be multiplying every previous term by the negative 2. That's our common ratio. So I think I'm going to use that formula, if you don't mind. Recursive sequences do not go into the sum of the sequence mode nicely. So you'd have to figure stuff out, which I don't really want to do that right now. <laughs> so the first 16 terms would be, let's see, first term, <sighs> 1 minus the common ratio, use parentheses, um, to the 16th power over... 1 minus the common ratio of negative 2. Make sure this is a subtraction sign and make sure this is a negative symbol, or you could just call that a 3 if you want to do a little simplifying. These kids always ask me, like, oh, can I just type? If it's equivalent, then yeah, go ahead, just type that. Um, always come up with this one on our calculator, though. What is it? Negative 21,845. So you see why you don't want to sum up 16 terms by hand. Like, that would be really tedious and horrible. All right, so here. These are infinite. And you're only allowed to find infinite series if your ratio is um, less than 1. I think it's technically the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1. So here your ratio is 3 eighths. So yeah, you can find the sum. And remember, the sum of the infinite series is that really cool formula where um, it's the initial term, so 13 over 1 minus r, so 1 minus r is 3 eighths. Now, typing this on your calculator, remember, you need to put that denominator in parentheses. I think I answered this one already, or not. Oh, let's try this again. <laughs> so it comes out to 20.8, and if you hit math enter enter on your calculator, that comes out to 104 over 5. So whichever answer makes you happy, I really don't care. Um, let's figure out, now they are seriesing them in notation where they're adding them together, but the common ratio, remember, is A2 divided by A1, so that would be 5 over 10, which is 1 half. So yeah, we're allowed to find the sum of the infinite series. It is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. Parentheses around that, please. I should be able to do that in my head, but I can't. <laughs> it's 20. Oh, I could have done that in my head. I had no faith. All right, so here. The common ratio is a 3, which means that's not less than 1, so this is not possible. It diverges is the issue. Um, the limit does not exist is another issue. So it's going to go off to infinity, and you can't find a limit, therefore you can't find the sum. Oh, and now we start the application questions. This question should feel horribly familiar to you. So a, a value of a card depreciates 18% every year. 
Now, this is a little confusing when you think of it in terms of our formula we've been using, but you bought a car for 22000 in 2009, so that's before any time has elapsed in the car's life, if you want to call it that. So this is actually the zeroth term. So we're, we're restructuring the formula a little bit. But once I restructure it, you're going to be like, oh, that looks super familiar. <laughs> so what's the value of the car in 2015? Well, a long time ago, we used to do this question by just saying your initial value, and then depreciates is 1 minus 0.18. And then what goes here is the important part. So if you're saying this um, value is in the zeroth year, this is the beginning of time, if you want to think of it that way. This is when n equals zero. So this is six years later. So that's what we're going to put right here. So it's confusing because the formula we've been using is n minus 1. Well, you have to be careful where your story problem is starting. If it's starting with an initial amount where like nothing has happened, no time has elapsed, that's the zero with term. So I don't want you to put 6 minus 1 in this formula. It's just flat out 6. So stop and think about your question before you type this in. So on my calculator, this comes out to $6,688.15. This is just the exponential decay formula from a long time ago. So, yay, something feels familiar, finally. <laughs> All right, population. So in this problem, um, the population grows 23.5%. And then in 2000, there's like the beginning of time here. This is the population. So we're going to start with that number as our initial value. And then it's growing, so 1 plus 0.235. And then what goes up here is important, right? That's what we have to think about. So in 2030, that's the 30th year of the story problem, right? So you're going to put a 30 right there. Oh, good. <laughs> a huge number. Uh, 8, comma, 9, 8, 7, comma, 7, 3, 2, comma, <laughs> 2, 4, 6. 8,987,732,000. Okay, that's unrealistic. Florida's not going to have 8 billion people in it. Come on. All right, anywho, that's the answer to this question, even if it's unrealistic. I have a feeling your population doesn't continue to go by a quarter of population. Oh, that's crazy. Anyway, moving on. Salary. An employee agreed to a salary plan where his annual salary increase was 4.5% each year. And then that's his 10th year. So what's his pay for his first year of work? Well, this is one of those backwards questions where they give you the answer to the 10th term. I don't know the first term, but using our formula here, growing 4.5% would be 1.045 added to 1. Now this is the question. So after his 10th year of work, you have to figure out like what is appropriate for the exponent. Like putting a 10 in doesn't make sense because he's his initial pay is before he even started working, like his zeroth year. So this time we do want to think about n minus one from the formula. So he's he's getting nine raises is the issue. That's where this number is coming from. Nine raises. You don't get a raise the minute you start working. You get a raise after your first year. So think of it that way. Anywho, solving, you know, I'm going to divide this over here, whatever that number is, and we got our first year of pay to be, oh, something, 33700 And then to the nearest dollar, how much did he earn after, uh, for all 10 years? So this is a summation question, right? Summing the first 10 years. So let's use that formula, 33700 1 minus, now his his R is this guy right here, 1.045. For, now remember, this is confusing, because it is 10 years. I know, <laughs> just really messing with you today. He is working for 10 years. He didn't get 10 raises, but he's working for 10 years. Um, and then 1 minus 1.045 goes right here. So he made... Hmm, 414,112 dollars and 66 cents for all 10 years total. All right, that ends one of our last lessons.
All right, good luck.